This is Mark. Hey, Mark. It's Tim. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Yeah. Yeah. Happy to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, just going to do some questions. Um, did you get a chance to read over the uh, document that I sent you? Uh, I did. Awesome. Yeah. That's just a boilerplate thing that um, I have to send out to anyone that I interview for this. Um, that, that's fine. How are you doing with the uh, corona craziness? <laughs> well, I'm up in an island north of Seattle, so there's not much panic up here. Um, in fact, the... okay, from that area myself. I say it one more time. Uh, which island are you from? No, sorry, your 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 audio is a little fuzzy. Um, which island are you from? Oh, uh, Whidbey, W H I D B E Y. Oh, okay. I'm from uh, Vashon. Oh, yeah. I I yeah. am, I have known people from Bashan in the past. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, there, there's there's I mean, I, coming from a conspiracy background, I'm sorry, uh, the virus for me is is way too slow for um uh, for all the hype. I mean, the entire country is shut down and another 100 plus countries in different parts of the world are shut down and we're not even going to not even come close to approaching the mortality rate that was initially put out there in the beginning. So, I, d sorry, don't get it. <laughs> there's some, there's something else going on, and I'm still trying to figure out exactly what that is. What's your, uh, I guess, main hunch about what is going on? Well, I don't think it's one of the the top theories. You know, the the conspiracy world has been looking for something like this for a while, and the top theories are, you know, t take your pick. The, the Democrats are staging a coup. The Republicans are draining the swamp. They're going to reset the entire economy. They're trying to destroy America. Um, or, you know, if you want to go really grim, you know, they're going to, they're they're trying to depopulate the world, you know, you know, reduce the the world's population, but we're just not seeing it, um, which is why mm -hmm. people here are ignoring. I and mean, social distancing only has so much of an effect, especially when you've you've basically told anyone under the age of thirty indirectly that you're basically bulletproof. So the worst the worst you could be is a carrier, and so people are getting cabin fever and they're running around and it's. Yeah, it's not. We'll have to see. I, but uh, but for me, I I don't know. I think it's something bigger. It feels like something bigger. I I don't know what it is, but I'm, I'm right now. I'm just calling it the event. See, I figure you know once you get to a certain stage in the next I don't know month or so, you're gonna you're gonna roll out something big, because the virus is only doing one thing. Uh, with the lowest common denominator is everyone's home. That's the big key. The the family's home. The, the millennials have moved home. The Gen Zers have moved home. The kids are not in school. You're not. At, nobody's at work. Uh, everything's shut down. You, even if you had like a thousand bucks in your hand right now, wh where would you go to spend it? Yeah, there's there's nowhere to even go. Uh, so man, it's it's a weird thing. So I, I'll, I'll do a rant on it tonight. I think during during my podcast. But anyway, what where where do you want to go with this? Um, so I guess we could just start off, uh, when did you first discover like flat earth theory and what inspired you to learn more about it? Uh, I first discovered it in 2014, the summer of 2014, because I was literally conspiracy bored. I'd looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Some I like more than most. Uh, my big qualifier for any conspiracy is, would I do the same thing? would you know because I, I don't believe necessarily in a ton of i mean yeah there's sinister conspiracies out there no question and there's legitimate you know media endorsed conspiracies we, we all know they're out there but for me to endorse one it's i've got to look at it and say okay would i have done the same thing or does the end justify the means you know is the greater good being served here uh, because that's what really a, a lot of conspiracies are. You're, you're making moves that might be unethical, but you're basically bypassing the general public to to get something accomplished. And okay. so that's say... sorry. Say it again. Uh, when you say like, would I do the same thing? Um, are you saying like, would you do the same thing as the people that are um, 
pushing forth the conspiracy or the ones that are oh no, no the ones that are the ones that are hiding it so the, so yeah. for me it was like okay let's say because let's say we found out in 1960 that the world wasn't a globe and we didn't find out until 1960 because mm -hmm. we just didn't have the technology to do it would i tell the general public no no i would not uh even if i was the powers that be because the general public wasn't wasn't ready for it back in 1960 and more than that you didn't have the the media infrastructure that you do now uh 1960 takes you know even television was relatively new radio yeah a lot of people had radio but newspapers were still you know the that's where most of the people got their their news their comprehensive news anyway so now you know flash fa fast forward to 2015 when we were first doing this, I mean, you have um, high-speed internet, social media, and six billion smartphones. I mean, more people have smartphones than have running water. The, you know, it's it's easy to do it now, which is what. So yes, I, I would have I would have done it anyway. So that's when I that's when I got into it was 2014, and then I looked at it and tried to hammer out all the details over the over nine months, and then finally decided I was going to just push it forward to, into um, the internet hive mind in the beginning of 2015. And that's where we are now. Gotcha. And that's around when you made the uh, Flatter's Clues video? Yeah, yeah. The first clue was made on February 10th, 2015. So just a little over okay. five five years old now. Gotcha. Yeah, I uh, watched all those for part of my research. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so do you have any family or friends, uh, who believe the earth is flat? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, all, everybody in the community that, you know, I made a whole bunch of new friends. Um, as far as family goes, it's really mixed. You know, I've got some mm -hmm. family members that really like it, some that really hate it and a whole bunch that like it, but aren't going to come out of the closet as it were, because the, mm -hmm. you know, of the peer pressure from other friends or family or mostly coworkers. You know, nobody wants to be that guy because, again, you can dodge friends and family, but you got to go to work. And if you go to right. work and you're known as that flat earth guy, you can you can catch a lot of grief and they're not they're not going to let it die. You know, it's kind of like the schoolyard. Right. So how have you um, communicated with your family about this? Uh, I mean, they know what I do. I mean, I've been doing it so long now in mean, five years that they know kind of where I am but as far as laying it out to him in the beginning. It wasn't easy, uh, but I think I was mm -hmm. warning people because I, I got enough media exposure right away that I, I basically had to warn them. I was kind of pushed into it from the outside, meaning, OK, <laughs> I'd rather have them find out from me then find out from someone who posted something it's like hey isn't you know your son slash brother slash cousin whatever or what you know didn't i just see him doing such and such what does this mean you know so i I just got it got in front of it and said okay this is what i'm doing here's why and the, you know mm -hmm. this is it's not going away anytime soon gotcha what were their reactions to that uh mixed Next, so, I mean, I was considered a fairly eccentric guy growing up anyway. I mean, my, um, I, it, I mean, my high school life was nothing real special. Uh, but at the same time, I peer pressure really didn't mean much to me. I, in fact, I really could care most of the time. I really could care less about peer pressure. I mean, I hung out in different cliques, and that they influenced me to a point, but only to a point. And then I realized, I was like, look, if I'm going to get anything done for myself i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to go out and do it on my own uh so th it was it was fine i mean it wasn't it was definitely the strangest thing i've ever done for my friends and family but it com it didn't come out of left field they they didn't look and go it's like what you know what would be a it's like wow really surprised it was not definitely wasn't out of the blue right um so then while you were in school uh, and those younger years what did you learn about the shape of the earth oh like everybody you know uh you know the globe's in your classroom literally when you're six years old and it sits there you know you don't really even go over it much you know i i can't even remember a, a teacher with the exception of pointing out where maybe a country was that somebody asked a question it's like do you know where this is on the globe other than that the teachers didn't even have to pick up the globe it was just always sitting there for 12 years um and 
Oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I mean, that was that was basically it. And we didn't have, I, I don't think my high school had, a, well, we definitely didn't have astrophysics um, or even really astronomy. It was basic stuff, you know, um, English, history, sociology, you know, stuff like that. Or they called it social <laughs> studies back in the day. Um, so, yeah, very little in terms of, and those, that's things we don't teach people even now. You know, we don't teach people about, um, a lot about geology in high school or engineering or physics. I mean, yeah, there's some physics, but in fact, I don't, I don't even can't remember if my high school even had physics back in, back in the day. Gotcha. Um, so did you find yourself questioning the idea of the globe at that age? No, no, nobody did. No, I mean, this was, this was literally a non-starter, uh, l almost until about 2015. I mean, it was right. flat, flat Earth was a very, very, very small thing out there uh, on the internet. And the internet, you know, had been around for a little while, and the, nobody cared. Nobody, including me, and I was into conspiracies. You know, I would looked at just about everything. And the, one of the only, literally, one of the only reasons I I went down that road is because it's like, well, I've looked at everything else, and this appears to be out there. Let's let's dig into it. Uh, before that, gotcha. no, no, I didn't question it. Nobody did. Um, everybody in the community that I'm currently in right now, they're all, they've all been in very, very recently. Every once in a while you might run into something. It's like, oh, I was in 15 years ago. It's like, yeah, you really weren't. Cause if, if you were, you would have put stuff out. Right. Do you remember like a particular point that was your introduction to conspiracy or has it been something that's kind of always been, um, a part of your life? Uh, mine was earlier because I'm older. So my first introduction to conspiracies, just general conspiracies, was the movie JFK, which I saw in the theater back in 91, I'd like to say, whatever it was released. I mean, I saw it opening weekend and I grew up very naive in, in terms of, you know, this was before the Internet. So I didn't think that pe people even lied uh, on an authoritative level. And then when I saw JFK, which was which will go down as Oliver Stone's masterpiece, uh, it was it was just eye opening. And I remember leaving the theater with you know a, it was a packed house, and people. It was one of the first times I'd walked in out walked out of a theater to where people were were not shaken; they were angry. They they were like mm -hmm. it was absolutely convincing. And you know when he broke it, the way he broke it down, and the way you were engaged engaged in it, it was brilliant. And then would you say it just kind of grew from there? Well, it grew, but there wasn't much, really much to, to grow from. I mean, if you were into conspiracies before the Internet, you know, before, I mean, oof, I mean, high speed Internet didn't even kick in till after 9-11. Uh, I mean, for the next 10 years, I, I didn't, didn't really do much. I mean, yeah, I poked around a little bit books and periodicals and stuff like that. But it wasn't until 9-11 that everybody got the, the second shot. You know, that was that was the thing that, that got a lot of people to take notice because it was so public and there was so much more media than there was uh, when the, the JFK movie came out. And obviously since JFK, again, remember, J, JFK was in 1963 and 9-11, um, yeah. 50 years later. Uh, that's when people really, you know, the conspiracy that honestly, that was kind of the birth of the new conspiracy movement was, uh, 9-11. Okay. Um, so coming back to, uh, flat earth, what evidence of a flat earth do you find most like powerful and convincing? Uh, the, the, the most convincing out of any of them. I mean, I've got two, my two favorites. I'll give you, give you my top two. Uh, my first one's long distance photography. And by that, and that was not something that was talked about in the clues. It's not something that was talked about in the documentary. Uh, it is it is very, the, the scientific community does not like looking at it uh, for obvious reasons. And that is, um, if you're looking off into the distance, right, the boat goes over the horizon. We all know this, the boat's gone, it's gone over the side of the curve. Something we, we're growing up learning and uh, we reinforce it to other people. That's just what happens. Well, things changed when HD technology came out, which is all of a sudden we started looking off into the distance and all of a sudden boats that weren't there because they were gone from just our eyes, uh, we can now pull back into frame very clearly, as a matter of fact, and record it. And so it's like, hey, what is the curvature of the earth anyway? And we started looking into it and um, under five miles approximately, it's about eight inches per mile squared. 
I mean, I know after that, you know, it gets tricky because you have to fuzz around with a lot more geometry. But under 500 miles, eight inches per mile squared works works just great. And we just kept shooting more and more and more footage. I mean, everybody sort of run to the beaches and looking at lighthouses and oil rigs and boats and just about anything you can think of over a body of water because water lays flat. And it, that's that just kept, you know, pictures worth a thousand words and HD video is worth even more than that. And that was by far the most compelling to most people. Um, the second one, the one that resonated for me, though, more than the photography, I mean, the photography is great. Don't get me wrong. That, that's wonderful. And it, and it absolutely resonates with the majority of, of our group. But the one that I like more is the physics question, which is um, gravity versus a vacuum. Which one wins? And it turns out that the vacuum wins every time, every time it, it cannot, it does not fail. And, you know, by that, I mean, you know, everything for as small as you taking a straw and sucking a soda out of the bottom of the glass, you know, the, the soda is kept in there by gravity, but the vacuum you created gets rid of that really, really quickly to creating a, like a vacuum chamber above your head, you know, in, in a second floor with a valve, you turn that valve, you know, if you pop that valve, what do you think happens? I mean, it's instant, it's violent. Every physics student will know this. You can watch tons of videos on it. And the problem, but there's a problem there. And that is, okay, so why didn't gravity keep the atmosphere, the air in your room, why didn't it keep it there instead of rushing upstairs and equalizing? Because pressure, it's one of the laws of thermodynamics. Pressure needs a container, plain and simple. The question is, when you go outside, how are you still breathing? Exactly, because what is supposedly above you is even a even bigger and more powerful vacuum chamber, the biggest of all. How is, how is our atmosphere still here? And if you come back and you say, well, well, no, it's gravity because that is the answer, right? Then I come back and say, well, you mean the same gravity that couldn't even keep the air in your room? That gravity? And I mean, people have just scrambled. I even had a guy who stumbled just the other day. He says, well, but there's so much more gravity. Uh, he honest to God said that to me. And it's like, wow, really? More gravity outside, 10 feet outside your doors, more gravity. Love it. So anyway, those those are the, the, the two big ones for me. I mean, I've got more, but those are usually the two that get people started. And have you done um, these kinds of experiments yourself or is it more uh, you found others that have done them and you um, like to kind of share their work? D depends which ones. I mean, I've done long distance photography myself. Um, I've done laser, laser experiments myself. I've done the, um, the moon temperature one myself. I always think those are fun. Uh, the rest, you know, I, I try to reference people that aren't flat earthers. So when it comes to mm -hmm. vacuum chambers, I mean, there's tons and tons of tons of vacuum chamber videos out there. People love doing it. So I, I like grabbing clips from people that aren't flat earthers just to, to prove the point because, you know, you don't want bias if you can help it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've done, done experiments myself, but hung out with a whole, I mean, there are people that have done way, way better experiments than me. Uh, my role is mostly, you know, again, the freshman recruiter, I get people in the door, I get people thinking about stuff and it's like, Hey, you want to do experiments? Go that way. Um, so then why do you think other people continue to believe that the earth is spherical? Uh, mostly it's denial. More, more than anything else. Uh, if you have a bachelor's degree, well, there's several factors. One is education. If you have a back bachelor's degree in a physical science, it's going to be really, really tough. If you have a master's degree, it's almost impossible. And of course, PhDs, we don't even try because they're, they're doomed. Uh, a lot of it comes down to, I mean, for the same reason we haven't found like a PhD to break ranks yet. You know, you, I mean, we have converted a ton of people, but at the same time, the, most of it, you know, it's, it's so, it's so jarring to the, to the human psyche. You, people go through, literally go through the five stages of acceptance, you know, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then finally acceptance. I run into people all the time. First, first one is always, same thing with me. It was like, once I saw it, it was like, no, there's no way. There is no freaking way because when you see it, when you finally, when it finally sinks in, you realize you were tricked. You realize you fell for something like a, like a giant piece of street magic and nobody likes to feel that way. It's like, oh, how dumb was I? 
to, to fall for it, you know, like, like anything. And so again, yeah, people, we, I have, I have seen people convert in, you know, most of the people that, that convert over, uh, take about two weeks. I took longer. Mm -hmm. I took nine months, but I didn't have a lot of content to work with. I've seen people turn in less than a day, but the ones that, that dig in their heels, I mean, it's mostly, they're not even looking at the arguments. They are literally just sort of, nope, nope, you're an idiot. You're ignorant. You don't know science. Science is proven. If I have to hear that one more time, science has already proven that. Science has already proven that. You know, there's, there's absolute tons of evidence. And I go, really? What evidence? Which is why, you know, I throw the, um, the, the quick argument, uh, or it's a statement actually by um, George Orwell who wasn't a flat earther, but he was talking about how people just believe science because they're science, you know, they're, they're scientists, they're people in lab coats. And he said, he wrote this in 1946. He said, if you go out to anybody on the street and you ask them how they know the, the world is a globe, their first response is immediate. And, he, and it's like, well, what are you talking about? We know, we know it's a globe. And then you come back at them and you say, how do you know that it's a globe? They all of a sudden start, the gears start grinding and they get, they start getting upset because they realize that they don't know. They were told and they just believed it because they were told and their parents and their parents after them for at least five centuries. Even though in 1946, there were no space programs. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. It wasn't even founded. So how did everybody in the world know in 1946 that it was a globe? Now you can come back and say, well, they know because of ships going over the horizon or maybe the sticks and shadows argument. It's like, no, nobody knows the sticks. The people today don't know the sticks and shadows argument. Maybe the boat going over the horizon, maybe that's it. But what about the people that lived inland? The people lived in the middle of Kansas, Nebraska, never saw a boat going over the horizon. How did they know? They knew because the textbooks told them. There you go. So, like in other interviews that you've done, you talked about um, the conspiracy continues to be promoted because of like vested interest in um, the general public believing in around Earth. Could yeah. you elaborate a little bit more on like why do you think people would continue to promote um, around Earth narrative? We just that's just the majority. I mean, that's literally what we're talking about here, which is why, again, why we we've, we've done so well because. It, like with anything, uh, I mean, look, science preaches a whole bunch of stuff that people just don't know for sure, and they can't prove one way or the other. So it's just peer pressure. If you, there's an old saying that if you say something loud enough and repeat it enough times, people are going to believe it. And with us, we've now kind of taken advantage of social media. We've created a model to explain the world that is easier than the solar system. And because people like easy, use the, you know, Sun Tzu's art of war, people are like water. They will always take the path of least resistance, always. And you're saying, well, that doesn't mean you're right. I'm going, no, it doesn't. But it means we're going to gain more traction faster and more often than not. And being, you know, until we can all of a sudden what I consider, you know, reaching the tipping point. And it sounds crazy, but, you know, the tipping point is when more people accept the, um, uh, the enclosed world model than they do the solar system model. And you, again, you might think it's crazy, but look up a wonderful study that was done just a few years ago by u.gov, scientific research study. We had nothing to do with it. They pulled 10,000 Americans and they asked them about, you know, the flat earth because they thought, well, how come why not? It's trending. And when they started getting down to the lower and lower demographics, and it shouldn't surprise you coming from, from this generation, when they got to the 18 to 24 year olds, they were skewing a full third against the globe. And that spooked mm -hmm. a lot of people. It spooked a lot of scientists to where National Geographic was calling me and, and ABC was calling me and people were calling us like, a, you know, to where they were actually going after the research facility itself saying, you're, well, you're, you're doing it wrong. So we talk about that's all these guys do. And they're your team. <laughs> Why are you? They just didn't like the results. Now, what's interesting is mm -hmm. when you get below 18 years old, we go even higher. I mean, I, I will dare to say that without peer pressure, we're skewing over 50% because I've seen it in straw polls. So anyway, sorry, the short answer to your question is peer pressure. That's the only reason that uh, the, the globe is still being promoted is because, well, and why people are still believing it is because of peer pressure. You know, the globe's there and you don't want to be that guy. I mean, I've, I've literally, I cannot count the interviews that I've done that the network and or podcast or whoever it is couldn't run it because they were afraid of the of the backlash 
of, of even mm-hmm. talking about it. Hell, I we did a CBS piece two years ago where they it was it was the number one flat earth video tracking for for months and you know got over a million hits very very quickly and cbs pulled it and then pulled it from their archives and it was a showcase it was a cbs sunday morning piece and they pulled it entirely because of the backlash they got from their uh from their viewers so peer pressure a very 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 strong thing What else you got? Um, yeah, sorry, just collecting my notes here. Yeah. Um, and then in terms of your Flat Earth Network, um, what do you feel that you get from being part of that community? Like, what does that mean to you uh, on a personal level, on an emotional level? Uh, personal level, it's, it's it, well, it's strange. I mean, it's unprecedented for me because, uh, you know, I, I've created a new circle of friends that uh you know the, the the common common thread is that we're all we all consider ourselves very very open minded obviously you know if you're open minded enough to to believe in this you're you're willing to believe just about everything uh but emotionally i don't know because i i think it's part of something bigger uh, i again if you, if you saw the documentary i wasn't kidding when i said i didn't i didn't plan on doing this i didn't want to do it it just came to me you know, flat earth just kind of fell in my lap and, you know, I just started moving forward with it and people were interested in talking about it. It's like, okay, let's, let's continue to talk about this. And I explored it as, uh, as, about as best as I could. So now, um, I don't, I don't know if it, it, it even really plays into my emotions because I can't let my emotions really get involved that much. I mean, I'm passionate about it. Sure. But uh i'm in a position where i can't let i mean because obviously you know the the trolls and i mean the comments are just brutal which is why i encourage anyone that goes into flat earth i go don't read the comments on youtube because you won't be able to sleep at night and i don't even get i don't even get threats but people the initial knee-jerk reaction is you're an idiot it's like well it's not a rebuttal and but there's only so many times you can you can read that before you know it starts starts digging into you so emotionally I, I kind of distance myself from the whole thing i you know i just spread the word you know get the message out there and then move on to the next group gotcha. um and then can you envision anything that would cause you to question your belief in the flutter oh yeah 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 two things uh i mean well obviously you know if somebody put me in a rocket ship and and threw me into the space station, which there's nobody up there. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to do that, but no one's going to do that. I mean, Neil Tyson hasn't even gone up there, which is really, really weird. He should have gone there 15 years ago. Uh, but two things. First would be uh, take any 4K camera, put it on the, the capsule of any rocket, and then send it off past Earth orbit. Send it off into the distance. Keep the camera pointed down at the ground and watch the Earth turn from a flat surface into a globe and you know and and then get smaller and smaller in the distance that's never been done in the history of space travel which is statistically so unlikely it's mind-boggling that'd be the first one that i would suggest because we you know we should be able to analyze that footage and again the, the key here is let the camera run don't show me some edited footage where all of a sudden you you have a launch and then 20 minutes later you see a red convertible in space don't show me that it's not gonna fly no play on words there the other thing you could do though if you want to do it from the ground and i put this challenge out there for several years now is um give me a spacesuit any spacesuit operational from the 60s all the way till now i mean you loan it to me you're not going to give it to me put me in a vacuum chamber and pull the switch tell me how, how tell me how that works tell me tell me what part of a spacesuit and i've thrown this at physics people and they will not answer it it's like tell me how a spacesuit works don't i don't care about the oxygen or the co2 or the heating or the cooling tell me how a spacesuit doesn't turn into a basketball when exposed to a vacuum and people you know, i've had some people come back and say well it's layers i go no 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 my winter coat has layers that only stops the cold tell me how a, a, a an astronaut suit has complete articulation points you know the elbows move the knees move your fingers move no 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 you would blow up like a balloon you would you would turn into a parade float and then it would burst and you would die so how does that that work in fact it was brilliant um 
uh, the early spacesuits, and you can look this up, it's not secret information, the early spacesuits that NASA was toying with in the, um, the early 60s were made out of plastic and metal. They were these huge clunky things because they knew exactly what a vacuum would do to a soft suit. And then somewhere, somewhere along the line remembered that nobody coming out of the American high school system or most of the people in the world don't know anything about physics. They say, no, we'll just use a soft suit. We'll, we'll, we'll put it on TV. No one will, no one will figure it out. And they didn't. It's brilliant. So that's, that's my big challenge. If somebody gives me that sort of thing, I, I'll, I'll quit Flat Earth tomorrow. Right. Um, is there anything else that you think I should have asked or anything that um, you think it would be good for me to know? Uh, not really, other than, again, everybody that gets into Flat Earth, it's not like, you know, that we have to recruit at all. Uh, people get into it because they try to disprove it. They look at Flat Earth, they think it's stupid, and then it's, it's like, okay, well, I'll just disprove it, and then I can move on. And it, it's, it's a trap. Once you try to disprove it, the longer you spend time trying to disprove it, the worse it gets for you. Like me, eventually, I, I mean, I, I was a huge globe advocate, huge. I used to collect antique globes, maps all over my walls. And, and I was just there I'm going, I can prove the globe. I can prove the globe. And that's what everyone tries to do. And then eventually you can't. There's, you have nothing left to do. Now, l let me end with this. Can I prove to you right now that the earth is flat. No, if, if I could, I'd be the most famous person ever. Can I create so much reasonable doubt in the globe model that the only place you have left to go is some sort of enclosed world flat model? Yeah, I can. I can do that all, all day long. And you're saying, well, that's not, that's not enough. Reasonable doubt is enough. And I go, yeah, it is in court every day. Every day, reasonable doubt works. And that's what we're talking about, which is why the community just keeps moving forward. Because lots of people in the community don't agree on the different aspects of the flat model. But at the end of the day, everybody agrees on one thing. At the very least, it's not a globe. So there you go. All right. And then uh, anyone else you think I should uh, talk to? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there's a guy, You, the next guy you, you should probably talk to is a guy named David Weiss. W-E-I-S-S, -S, and I, in fact, I can give you his email real fast. Yeah, okay. His email address is dtweiss at gmail.com. And uh, he's out Sorry, the... gmail.com? Yeah, dtweiss at gmail.com. So dtweiss.com. In fact, I'll, I'll shoot it to you. I'll shoot it to you also when I, when I hang up and um, I'll send it to, uh, to your email address. Uh, but he's, he's a good guy, uh, goes to all the conferences. Uh, he's got an app, which is fa absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, it's, it's our first, first app. It's called the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock. And uh, he, he, he'd love to talk to you. Awesome. All right. all right. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Hey, you have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.